Well, hello, it is sunny. Today, we are going to be getting the goats out on pasture, which is exciting because they've never been on pasture here in Pennsylvania. Since we moved in, we have this really nice, well-fenced area for our goats. And that works really good for goats because goats are escape artists. You can see we have a good, solid, ooh, windy today. We have a good, solid fence here, chicken wire on the outside. It's escape. It has been escape proof for these goats. They have yet to escape this enclosure, which is great. So we're going to go ahead and mess that up and put up some electric netting today that they can escape from. <laughs> Today we're gonna to be using electric netting for livestock. And I have a love-hate relationship with this stuff. Actually, that's kind of dramatic. I neither love it nor hate it. I have like a tolerate and non-tolerate relationship. How's that? <laughs> it's quick to put up when it is handled properly. Uh, this stuff is tangled because it has not been hand handled properly. That's my wife. She is the tangler of the electric netting. Don't tell her I told you. We've been working with the cow fencing all week and uh, the initial setup on the cow fencing does take a while. Uh, this stuff will go up much quicker. And in a situation like this where you have a wide open area, lots of grass and mowed edges, it works really good. So we're gonna be putting some of this stuff up today. Let's get the clock, the drone clock, ready? The drone is up. Let's see how long it takes us to set up a paddock with this stuff today. The way that this, the way that we set this up the easy way, if it was put away correctly, it is not rolled, but rather it's kind of folded onto itself. I'll show that in another video when we move this. You take your first stake and you just throw it down and then you walk and you throw all your stake down as you go, then you put them in the ground. So we're just gonna walk, throw, walk, just like that. You'll notice with this electric netting, I have the white posts which are built in to my nets. When you buy this stuff, you're gonna to wanna to buy a couple of these black posts. They're kind of freestanding posts. They're for creating corners where your posts don't line up. Inevitably, the rectangle you make, these will not actually be in the corner spot. As you can see here, the difference was split about halfway. So you take one of these, stick it in the ground, wrap it around it, and that solves your problem. So, you know, for every rectangle of fencing you wanna make, you better have at least two. In this instance, we only needed to use one. Uh, sometimes you need to use like three or four, so just a good little tip. Goats are out, they're trained to the fence. Uh, the way that we train the goats to the fence, this seems a little cruel when you watch it, but uh, it is the worst of all evils. Uh, that, we, that's <laughs> not the expression. 
I know. Uh, that's the a... worst of all evil. Oh, <laughs> the worst thing you could possibly. She's heckling do. me. Get over here. If you're gonna heckle, get in this. <laughs> it's not the worst of doing. It's the worst thing we could possibly do to them. There's so <laughs> that's many That's what I want to do to goats. To the worst possible thing. Uh, so we put a collar on them. We don't keep collars on them all the time because that's dangerous. But we put a collar on them and a lead, and we walk them into the fenced-in area. And we brought them over to the fence line. We had a scoop of feed on the other side of the fence line. They get interested about feed. Their nose, which is one of the more sensitive parts, touches the fence while their hoofs are well grounded. They get hit. Shock to the nose. We want to make sure instead of running through the fence, they're running away from the fence. And that's what the lead was for, just to give them a tug backwards. Now they don't want to go near the fence, which is the whole idea of electric fencing. One brief shock, and, and while making an animal get shocked one time seems mean, and in that moment it isn't really nice, it's better than them free ranging and eating something poisonous and dying a long and painful death of twisted gut or getting out into traffic. You get the idea. A quick, you know. Train them to the fence and then keep an eye on them. All, all day long we're gonna be working out here today so we can watch yeah, them. Because uh, they still need a few more times to bump up against it. <laughs> They'll get the idea. We're gonna be working at the barn, monitoring. And uh, well, there it is, the goats are on pasture. And it took about a half hour. They're happy. They're out, they're back out there. The shock scared them at first, but they've uh, come back out. Lacey ran back to the, the barn. She's the like, grass, ah. the grass is worth it. If you want to know all the electric fencing gear that we suggest you purchase for whatever animal, I have an electric fencing guide. Uh, click on this link, and I don't want to put a link in front of your face. That'll bring you to our electric fencing guide to help you choose the right fencing. There's a class all about using movable electric netting in the Home Study Pioneer Library. If this is something that confuses you and you want to see step by step how it works exactly from complete start to finish, this is a half hour long class that shows you everything you need to know. Click here to become a pioneer, watch that class and all our other bonus classes, videos and podcasts. Today we're going to talk about movable electric fencing. 